The social response refers to how others react to someone when they find out that that person is a victim of violence and abuse. What do they say? What is their attitude? How do they treat the victim? Positive social responses are non-judgmental, compassionate, believe the victim, listen to and respect the victim's choices. Positive social responses lead to victims who recover more quickly and fully, victims getting support, victims accessing resources, increased safety, and reduced rates of violence and abuse. Negative social responses are judgmental, blame the victim, disbelieving, tell the victim what they have to do or should do. Negative social responses lead to victims who are less likely to seek support and help, victims who are less likely to report the abuse, Victims are less likely to disclose the violence again, and victims get a mental health diagnosis. Over the years of being abused by her husband, Reina often sought help from others. But instead of finding support, she experienced negative social responses. I tried calling a crisis line, but I got such an angry response as to why I was living in that situation that it completely turned me off from ever calling that agency again. When Raina called the police, she was told, There's nothing we can do unless he threatens to kill you or escalates to physical abuse. When it became physical, she did not feel comfortable turning to the police. When I called a different crisis line, I was told to call the police to make an emergency stash for myself, to get out of the house right now. No one listened to me when I tried to tell them that I had tried all these things already. Raina and her husband tried marriage counseling where she was told that you were 30% of the problem because you stay quiet rather than express yourself. A tactic Rena learned to keep herself and her kids safe from his tirades. She started to assert herself as the counselor told her to and the violence escalated. I turned to one of my friends and was told, Whatever the fight is about, you've got to forgive him. You've got to learn to let these things go. Don't hold on to them. Tomorrow's another day. It's going to be fine. You're letting him do this to you. You're letting him control you. Look how scared you are. How can you let yourself be pushed around by somebody like that? At the ER, Raina told doctors that her husband pushed her and sprained her ankle. They did not address it with her and called children's services without telling her or offering any support. Let me know what you did to deserve it. Were you egging him on? Were you trying to add fuel to the fire? Don't lie to me because if you lie to me, I'm going to find out. After Raina complained to the supervisor, she got a different worker. A different children's services provider asked me, why did you allow the verbal violence to continue to the point where it affected your household, your children? How could you let it get to the point where you let yourself get hurt? Focus on empathy and compassion, not pity or feeling sorry for her. Be non-judgmental about her choices, actions, and the situation she's in. Offer to just listen. Don't try to solve her problems. Most importantly, believe her. You don't deserve this. It's not your fault. It sounds like you're doing the best you can in a difficult situation. I'm concerned for you. You have the right to be safe. How did you respond when that happened? And what did you do? You're not alone. There are places that are free and confidential that can help you figure out what your options are if you decide that you want some help. 